Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we are going to focus on analyzing the Amazon Alexa review dataset or in simple terms, we are going to perform exploratory data analysis on the Amazon Alexa review dataset. Now if you want to know how to perform machine learning or deep learning on this dataset, I have done separate videos on this topic and you can find the links to these videos in the description box below. Before moving forward, if you are new to this channel and want to see more videos like this, don't forget to smash the subscribe button and turn on bell notification to stay updated each time I upload a new video. Stay tuned. So first let's import the required libraries. So here we are importing pandas for basic data operation, we are importing matplotlib and cbond for data visualization, then we are importing style to set a style for the plot, here we are setting the style as ggplot, then we are importing some libraries for text processing, such as re for re using the regex function, word tokenize to perform tokenization, port stemmer to perform stemming, and stop words to remove stop words. And finally we are importing word cloud to plot the word cloud. Now that we have imported the libraries, let's read the data from the file. Note that the data file is in a TSV file format. So to read the data, we need to specify the file separator being used. Now that we have loaded the file, let's visualize the initial data using the head function. Now we have an idea of the dataset. Let's use the info method to gain some more insights about the dataset. So this gives us the idea about the number of columns, the rows, the dataset type of the different entries. From this, we can see that there are no null values in the dataset. However, if we want to check for null values explicitly, we can use the isNullSum method. Let me show you how. So what this basically does is that it gives us the sum of all the null values in our dataset. And as we can see, our dataset has no null values. Now let's analyze each column further, starting with the rating column. Now this indicates the different ratings given by the customers. Let's use a count plot to see the distribution of the different ratings. So now we have a count plot of the different ratings. From this, we can infer that majority of the ratings in our dataset consist of 5 star ratings and 2 star ratings accounts for the least. Now instead of using a count plot, we can also use a value count method to get a count of the different ratings. Great, now we have a count of the different ratings in our data. How about we visualize the percentage contribution of these ratings using a pie chart. Let's do that next. So here for this project, I am going to create a simple pie chart. If you want to know how to take your pie chart to a next level, make sure to check out my pie chart tutorial video. I will add links to it in the description down below. So let's specify a size for the pie chart. Now 
now let's specify the different tags in our pie chart then let's plot the pie chart Then let's add a heading to our pie chart. Now we have a visual representation of the distribution of the ratings in a data set. Let's analyze the next column variations. The variation column in the dataset is used to indicate the different product variations being sold on Amazon on which the customers have reviewed. Just like we did for the ratings column, we can use a count plot to see the distribution of the different products. Here I am going to be plotting the variation on the y axis to make it more visually appealing. So there we have a count plot of the different product variations. Now instead of using a count plot, we can also use a classic bar chart to plot the product variations. So after visualizing the product variation using both count plot and bar chart, we can infer that the black dot is the most popular product variation preferred by the people followed by charcoal fabric. Let's also get a count of the different products using a value counts. Now we have an actual number of how many of these products are there in a dataset. So from this analysis, we can see that the most preferred product variations are black dot and charcoal fabric. How about we see the different ratings given by the customers for black dot and charcoal fabric? Let's find that out. So now we have a count of the different ratings given by the customers for black dot. This can also be visualized using any of the plots that we discussed above such as pie chart or count plot. Similarly, let's get a count of the different ratings given by the customers for charcoal fabric. So that gives us the different user ratings for charcoal fabric. Similarly, you can do this for the different product variations in the data set. Now using the same method, we can get a count of the feedbacks for each product. Here I am doing it for black dot variation. Speaking about the feedback column, let's now analyze the feedback column. This is our target column and is used to indicate if the comments given by the users are positive or negative. 1 is used to indicate a positive comment and 0 is used to indicate a negative comment. So let's use a count plot as before.
Now instead of using a count plot, we can also use a pie chart to see the distribution of the different sentiments. So now we have a pie chart showing the different user sentiments. As you might have noticed, we have analyzed the different columns except for the verified review column. So now let's analyze the verified review column. So first let's get the length of the different reviews. And then let's see the modified data using the head function. Now as we can see, we have the length of the different reviews in our data set. Now if we want to see the maximum and minimum length of reviews, we can do that using the describe method. So from this, we can get the maximum and minimum length of the reviews in our data set. Now let's plot the different lengths using a histogram. If you want to know more about histograms in detail, I've made a separate video on this topic as well. I'll add the links to it in the description down below. Now that we have done some analysis on our data, let's proceed to process the text data to make it easier for us to visualize the text data. So first, let's analyze some of the user reviews. So here I'm printing the first five user reviews along with the feedback. Now that we have an idea of the data that we're dealing with, let's proceed to process this data. Data processing is done to make the data into a usable format. There are different steps involved to make the data into a usable format. You can do them individually on the text data or what I'm going to do here is to create a function that does all of my text processing and then I'm going to pass my data into it. So let's define a function to do the different processing methods. So here we are performing lowercase conversion, then we are removing any URLs that may be present, then we are removing the punctuations, and then we are performing tokenization and removing the stop words. And finally, we are returning the process text data. Now let's apply this pre-processing function on the text data. Let's also perform stemming on the data. Here for this project, I'm going to use Porter Stemmer. You can also use any other type of stemmer such as Lancaster Stemmer or Snowball Stemmer or even Lamentization instead of stemming. The Python codes to perform those are there in my tutorial videos. 
So let's not perform stemming. Now let's apply stemming to the process data. Let's analyze the same text as before to see the process text data. Here you can see the effect of the processing function. Now that we have processed the text data, let's visualize the positive and negative data using a white cloud. So to do this, I am going to separate the positive and negative data. Now let us use a word cloud to visualize the positive reviews. So here we are pulling in the text data from the positive reviews. Then we are setting our figure size. Then here we are generating the word cloud and finally we are going to add a heading to our word cloud. So there we have our word cloud for the positive data. Similarly, let's do it for the negative reviews as well. So first let's separate the negative reviews. So there we have a word cloud for the negative reviews. So by conducting a data analysis on the Amazon review dataset, we can infer the following. The majority of the ratings in the dataset are 5 star ratings and it accounts for 72.6% of the total ratings in our dataset. The highest sold product variation in the dataset was identified to be the black dot followed by charcoal fabric. The least sold product variation was identified to be walnut finish. Upon further analysis on the black dot variation, it was identified that customers really loved this product variation as it received a majority of 5 star ratings and positive reviews. Upon analyzing the positive reviews using the word cloud, we could see that most of the customers loved to hear music on the devices, whereas the negative reviews mainly discusses about the product not functioning properly. That brings us to the end of this video. 
make sure to follow me on my social media handles to stay updated for more interesting content. Hope you got an idea of performing data analysis on the Amazon review dataset. Please do leave a like and subscribe to this channel if you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.